Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite and in today's video I'm going to take you through a thesis statement for the comparative study of Stephen Doldry's The Hours and Virginia Woolf's Mrs. Dalloway. So to flag as a starting point, there are typically five kinds of questions that you can get from Module A. And the reason I'm flagging this is because in preparation for your trials or for your HSC, I'd encourage you to try and respond to as many different questions as you can, keeping in mind these types of questions. And that way going into the exam, there won't be any surprises in terms of what kind of question you may get. So what are those types of questions you might get? Number one, you may have a general statement about textual conversations, which is in the practice question I work through in this video. This could be something like, what does textual conversations actually facilitate in terms of your understanding of the connections between two texts? The second kind you may get is a critical interpretation. So a statement about connections between texts or a statement about the text you have studied and then you'll need to weigh up the extent to which that statement aligns with your view. In fact, the practice question that I'm using is a combination of these two. It's a critical interpretation about the general nature of intertextual dialogue. You may have an extract from one of the texts, which is quite common in the HSC trials for this year. So you'll get an extract from one of the texts which identifies a particular theme from the text or a general connection between them. And you'll need to unpack that and bring that into your thesis statement. Or you might have something character based. The question might ask, okay, well, how does the development in characters or motivations, for example, distinguish the connections between the particular texts? That may even be used in addition to the extract. That was the case in one of the trial questions, which gave an extract from a Hagsey if you're doing that module of Tempest and Hagseed and then it also asked how the developments in characters and motivations supported the extract shown there. So there may be some combinations between these question types or it may be context based. You know, how does the development in context between Wolf and Doldry deepen our understanding of the key ideas that are conveyed? But what you notice between all of these questions is fundamentally you're going to need to show an understanding of how the context, the form, the characters, the ideas conveyed between these two texts through comparing them it deepens your understanding of not only these texts and their engagement, but also how meaning in text can be construed and redeveloped through different representations. The meaning you extract is never going to be solidified or finite in a particular text. It's constantly changing in relation to other texts. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're practicing different question types. But this is the question I'm working with today. It reads, never again will a single story be told as though it is the only one from John Berger. To what extent is this statement true in light of your exploration of textual conversations? In your response, make close reference to the pair of prescribed texts that you have studied in Module A. So the focus of the question is obviously here in the extract and like I mentioned to you earlier on, this critical interpretation is giving us a general statement about intertextual dialogue and how a dialogue between two texts opens new ways of understanding a text and how those new ways help to show us that a text can never be read as though it is a single story because that story which is conveyed is now going to be contingent upon and altered in relation to other texts on which that story is based or which has inspired the adaptation of those later texts. In some ways this question is actually quite similar if you set the Catholic trial the Catholic trial this year had a phrase in there about the enjoyment of reading and it also had a few other points in there as well. That concept of enjoyment of reading could have been read in light of textual conversations and how textual conversations open new ways of understanding the meanings that are contained within texts. So similar sorts of ideas. But I want you to keep in mind the point of textual conversations is to appreciate that notions in text can be constantly changed or altered or enhanced in relation to other texts which holds similarities to that prime text. Okay, so we know that when we do thesis statements, there are three crucial steps that one needs to follow. We ought to, number one, identify the keywords in the question. Number two, define those keywords and unpack them in a way that suits the development of your essay. And in order to do that, we can apply micro questions, right? We consider how or what or why or to what extent. We can apply those words to the highlighted phrases in order to kind of flesh them out and through answering them, you're taking your response further. You're not just using the words of the question into your thesis, but you're kind of unpacking them to a greater degree. And then you want to connect the keywords in the question. You want to make sure that you're connecting the keywords in the question or explaining what is it about the single story never being told the same and how is that reflected through your specific texts. 
So having discussed how you unpack this, right, looking at a single story, which single story is being conveyed, how is it being conveyed, and why is it now being transformed as though it is the only one, or as though it is not the only one, based on the alternative representation that's been offered in the adaptation of that text. So why is it that The Hours has deepened your understanding of Mrs. Dalloway? What new meanings does it convey? And how does this link to the broader notion of textual dialogue and how through textual conversations, the singularity of meaning in a text will never quite be the same. Okay, what I encourage you guys to do is to actually pause this video and have a crack at writing your own thesis statement, and then we'll have a look at the example I've provided on the following slides. All right, guys, I hope you went okay with your practice. Let's take a look at the example I've written here. Note the highlighted parts are where I've explicitly engaged with the question to show you that in a thesis statement, it's not about implicit links. Don't be afraid to actually use the question in your response. All right, let's take a look. Berger's statement illuminates the inevitable construction of meaning within text as infinite and specifically reshaped through the lens of external text seeking to adapt. So that first question there is broad. It's showing that I understand the precepts of intertextuality that are being framed in the extract here that texts don't have a singular meaning. They're constantly being adapted and changed in relation to other texts. In fact, those other texts provide us with a new lens through which we can examine the primary text being studied. The Hours offers an insight to the composition of the text, the text itself as it was written at the time, and a modern day adaptation. Through those three lenses the film offers, it deepens our understanding of the multiple levels of Virginia Woolf's original text, thereby opening new meanings, right? So that's a specific relation there in light of the question. The concept of a single story, undermined as only one, is exemplified through Stephen Doldry's adaptation of Virginia Woolf. The conversation opened between the composers initiates the possibility of multiple intertextual readings. So that's how we've kind of justified Berger's statement and we've foregrounded how that's true in light of what Stephen Doldry does. Now with module A, it's not really enough to kind of try and engage, well, with any module really, but particularly module A, to engage with the question only in the thesis statement, right? The rest of the introduction, you're going to introduce context, you'll introduce form, and you'll also signpost your points. And in so doing, you'll continue to justify why all of these adaptations in light of context and form continue to open new ways of understanding the text. So the thesis here is really just having that general opening about intertextual dialogism and how it opens new ways of understanding texts. But as the response continues, those examples and those justifications will continue to unfold. Okay, so I hope this video has given you a bit of a springboard in terms of how to address module A questions where you have a critical interpretation and a general statement about intertextual dialogue. I think it is really important though to keep in mind that while you have this direct engagement within the thesis statement, you ought to be conscious to ensure that that connection comes throughout the introduction and also in your topic sentences and body paragraphs. And you're constantly returning to how Doldry's adaptation deepens and opens new ways of understanding Virginia Woolf so that Mrs. Dalloway is no longer seen as a single story. That's what you're carrying through out the response. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do comment if you have any questions, like and subscribe to the channel. And I really hope to see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.